this is our first time leaving New York on a bridge and can you guess what bridge we are on look at my city look at beautiful New York and this is New York traffic here but look at the beautiful city and welcome to New Jersey this is our first time riding through a tunnel we are leaving New York and going to New Jersey well we're going to go through New Jersey so I was on my way to Maryland for a college reunion and the bus broke down. So now I am stranded at the, you can't see the name, the Chesapeake house. I'll turn the camera around, but basically I'm stranded here with the funky bus. You're not that much fun today. And um, my girlfriends are gonna pick me up. I was actually just gonna stay here and um, wait for the tow truck in the morning, but they wanna pick me up. So I'm gonna go with them back to the hotel. Okay, see you soon. So this is where I'm gonna have to keep the bus parked for the night. I was barely able to get into the parking spot, but um, it's okay. Hey, this is HBCU Love. They came out two o'clock in the morning to pick me up because the funky broke. This is with Shelly and Jovan. So we're about to go. Yes, we are. Hi, boo boo. So today I'm out here at the best HBCU in the world, MSU Morgan State University. Arden Blue. <laughs> what did you just say? Is that a real song? No, I didn't oh. know. <laughs> I was like, I don't know this. Go Morgan, go Morgan. Go Morgan. So today I am at my girl Jen's house waiting for the bus to get fixed and getting to it to a mechanic that Jen knows was a whole ordeal in itself. It's been two days of calling. I have AAA plus roadside assistance. Each of them couldn't find a tow truck big enough to handle my short bus. So when they did find one, um, first one that they called, they said he was on his way. He called me asked me to send him a picture of the bus. When I told him it was a bus, um, he called me to see where it was. And I said, did they tell you it was a bus? And he said, well, they said it was a Chevy, a bit like a van. I said, no, it's a bus. Sent him a picture. He said, no, I can't take that. It'll hang off the back of my tow truck. Okay, so that took about two hours for them to even get him. Fast forward a few hours later, um, got another tow truck to come out. And first he can't, I hid the key. What I thought, where I thought was a place no one would find it but he couldn't find the key. So I asked him if he would be able to tow it without the key. He said, yeah, but it would be additional money, of course. And um, so he'd call me, uh, he actually FaceTimed me to show me that he couldn't find the key. So a half an hour later, he FaceTimes me and I see a police car and he says that he just got stopped by the police because the bus is too big for his tow truck. It's an overload and he has, um, he doesn't have a heavy duty tow. So he shows me a picture and my bus is kind of hanging off the back of his tow truck. So I'm kind of glad the police stopped him because he could have caused damage to the bus. Um, so anyway, but now he has to leave it where he's at. Luckily, he's still in the same um, area, the same travel plaza on the other side by the gas station. So he leaves it there. I call AAA, they get someone else. I tell them please make sure they're going to send a heavy duty tow they assure me they will while I'm on the phone with AAA holding on for maybe no less than an hour and 45 minutes it wasn't two hours but it was almost two hours holding on um you know I was on speaker so I was doing other things but 
almost two hours later, finally I get a call from a local number I didn't know, so I thought it might be one of the tow companies, and it was. They said that they were on the phone with AAA, and they didn't know what they were talking about. And basically, I had a high deductible, so AAA gave them what they gave them, and I was going to have to pay $500 out of pocket, but he could do it. I, um, so he said he would FaceTime me when he got to the, um, to the bus because he was concerned that the guy who took it on the, um, the smaller tow truck maybe have did damage. And he said, um, you know, I, uh, the last one holding a cookie pays the price. <laughs> so he wanted to make sure it was good. So that made me nervous, high anxiety, waiting for him to get there. He, he gets to the bus. He, um, FaceTimes me and shows me. It's okay, um, you know, he says it looks like, you know, the guy did drag it a little bit, but it should be all right. And he had actually brought his mechanic with him to disengage something so that he could put it into a neutral because I didn't have the key because someone took the key. But whoever took the key apparently didn't take anything. And I think it might be because I had a lot of the stuff in the front. So the only door they could get in was the driver's door because I have a bolt on the other one and I had the key to that. I only left the key to the driver's door, which is also the ignition. So maybe they just didn't want to go through the hassle of, you know, climbing over and taking things. Or maybe they were just curious. I don't know. I don't know why they didn't leave the key. But um, luckily my kids were able to, when the first tow truck told me he couldn't find the key, it was almost 5 o'clock. I called my kids in New York and said, you guys have to send me to spare right away. So they went to UPS and I got the key this morning so I took it to the mechanic because um anyway back to the towing he said it was fine his mechanic un disengaged it the only good news he thinks it might be the transmission um line that broke now he said um when's the last time I got any work done I just got a tune-up on on the bus like less than 30 days ago and I asked my mechanic is there anything else I need to be safe I'm going to be driving long distance and he said just two tires, which I got tires on, you know, a couple of days ago. So um, the tow truck guy and his mechanic says that, you know, my mechanic really should have told me that, you know, that should have been changed. And they, you know, I should probably go back and do bodily harm to him, which I'm not. I'm just going to let him know. And I'm not going to use him anymore. So anyway, they took it. They ended up taking it to the, um, the shop that it's going to get fixed that they took it there it didn't get there until 11 o'clock last night I was going to meet them there but he said he would just FaceTime me and I could pay him you know my credit card so he got it there I um, went this morning I saw my bus it doesn't look like anything is missing I was you know nervous that whoever took the keys had went through it and that very uneasy feeling thinking that somebody's going through all your personal belongings and I was even think rethinking for a moment this whole journey I'm about to take because what if something were to happen like this again but I'm not gonna let this stop me these are only material things you know I could have God forbid had an accident or something so maybe this pause in my trip is for a reason and I am with friends you know I was blessed enough to break down when I was on my way to Maryland where I have a lot of you know my college friends which are like family so here I am now at Jen's house, um, sitting in the backyard. It's beautiful out here. I'm with her big dog, Bella. You might hear Bella running around. She likes to chase birds. And <laughs> there she goes. And um, I uh, have my laptop. So maybe I'll write a little bit and just enjoy, enjoy this piece. So for anybody else who might be experiencing something like this where your home <laughs> breaks down and now you don't have a vehicle and you don't have a home just you know make the best of it what I think I will do is get cameras that attach to my phone so that I can always see what's going on in the bus I think that will make me feel a little bit better to know you know that nobody's going through my things and but uh otherwise it's it's okay so uh just wanted to share a little bit of my story with you guys of you know what I'm going through but it's gonna be all right and I will be back on the road shortly and uh, I'll keep you updated and um yeah let me see if I can let you see Bella
This is Jen's dog, Bella. She is big. She scared me at first because she jumped right on me and almost knocked me over. But she's a sweetheart, and I love dogs. So Bella and I are just hanging out in the backyard. Bella's chasing the birds, and I'm just relaxing. here in Baltimore on a Thursday night. Girl, well, how's the food? Good. Better than last night? Right. All right, so my boy Mike, who doesn't want to be seen on camera, has agreed to travel with me all the way to where we going, Mike? Florida? Florida. We going to Florida, what? Mike is camera shot. Mike's being camera shot. Because Mike I'm is going to be to Florida. We going no to Florida in the bus. But we going in Florida, Mike? Yeah. I'm still trying to take a picture. All right. So I am out here at the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland with my girls, Jen and Tasha and Leash and me, Nikki. And we, we're going to have a yacht party, but we decided we're just going to have a girls day. So here we are drinking our Prosecco and I want to make a toast Saint to you. And what? Saint Germain. Saint Germain. Okay. <laughs> so I want to make a toast to all you ladies for joining me today. And, you know, let's just enjoy life and love and happiness. Cheers. 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 What are you pouring us? What is that? This is St. Hermann. It's an elderberry liqueur from St. Hermann, France. And you add it to your Prosecco. It's like ketchup, but liquor. It makes everything taste better. Woo! Day. The bus will be fixed tomorrow, and I'm at Moe's with my cousin Sierra. She spent some time with me down here while I had to wait for the bus to get fixed. So, thank you, Sierra, for coming and spending some time with me. She came out from Philly, so it's always good to have family and friends around people.